Shalom friends, welcome to Daf Reactions in Adarim 9. When the Talmud is talking about masculine hotness, usually it's talking about Rabbi Yochanan. In fact, often it's Rabbi Yochanan talking about himself. But occasionally, other hot men who aren't Rabbi Yochanan are mentioned in the Talmud, including in today's Daf. In my free time, all five seconds of it, I'm listening to Stephen Fry's Mythos books, a retelling of the Greek myths. So imagine my surprise when I open today's daf and lo and behold, it's deja vu all over again because we pretty much get the story of Narcissus. Just obviously the Jewish version with a different message, different outcome, and no nymphs. If you are upset with me bringing up Greek myths in connection to the Talmud, may I recommend, Judah Maccabee, that you save your anger for Hanukkah. Come at me then. Tractate Nedarim is all about vows. A Nazir is somebody who has decided to consecrate themselves to Hashem for a set period of time. A Nazir cannot drink wine, they can't get a haircut, and they have to avoid ritual impurity. At the end of the time, they give offerings and then snip snip get their haircut. One thing that remains the same from the time of the Talmud to the present is that people have a lot of feelings about other people's hair. We get a Baraita where Rabbi Shimon Hatzadik says, in all my days as a priest, I never ate the guilt offering of a Nazar who had become ritually impure. Except for this one time. But, to be fair, there were extenuating circumstances. What were those circumstances, you ask? Well, the Nazir was really ridiculously good looking. An absolute smoke show. With beautiful eyes and perfect curly hair. And Rabbi Shimon HaTzadik was verklempt. He was like, what happened to you that you decided to become a Nazir? You'll have to pull a Joe March. You're going to have to cut off all your beautiful curly hair. So the young man tells him what exactly happened that led him to make this decision. He was a shepherd and he went to the spring to get water. He sees his reflection in the water. He was almost overcome by his Yetzer Hara, the evil or selfish inclination that exists within each of us. So far, we're pretty parallel to what happened to Narcissus. But while Narcissus saw his reflection, fell desperately in love with it, became obsessed, was very mean to echo the nymph, and then got transformed into a flower, our shepherd avoids all of those things. Instead, he checks his Yetzer Hara right off the bat. He's like, why am I so obsessed with me? Why am I even proud of my appearance? Eventually, my body will become worm food anyway. Well, I'm sure attractive worm food for only the most attractive worms. So instead of becoming super self-obsessed and only focusing on his own vanity, he decided to become a Nazir. Because inevitably, it would eventually result in him shaving his hair for the sake of heaven. A diametrically opposed outcome to the story of Narcissus. Jim Hanatzadik is so moved by this that he gets up, walks over, and kisses the shepherd on the head. Was this an excuse to get up close and personal with the curls? One can only speculate. I'm speculating. But be that as it may, Rabbi Shimon HaTzadik says, I hope there will be many more just like you among the Jewish people, Hadis who decide to become a Nazir out of perfectly pure intentions. The sages then have an argument, I'm sure you're shocked, about the rationale of Rabbi Shimon HaTzadik eating the guilt offering in this case. Did it have to do with the reason and motivation for why that person chose to become a Nazir, as opposed to other people who might have other reasons? Yet, in all the discussion, it does not appear that anyone else is taking the curls into consideration as the extenuating circumstance. But maybe that's because, unlike Shimon Hatzadek, who is distraught over the haircut, everyone else can recognize that no matter how tragic that is, eventually the shepherd's hair will, in fact, grow back.